Three-dimensional design for me was always kind of the greatest form of creation. Being able to take an idea from that very tiny amount of energy being this idea in your head and then formulating that into a fully functional three-dimensional product. Take that a step further, I always kind of wanted to design the ultimate three-dimensional object, right? And so designing space vehicles, to me, was like that ultimate form of creation. It's like, what's the most badass thing you could design would be a spaceship. And NASA really was kind of the final frontier for me. Uh, my name is Evan Twyford and I'm a habitability designer at NASA's Johnson Space Center. We in our group do conceptual design for NASA's uh, human space flight. Uh, a lot of these projects are coming down as m you know, major uh, kind of campaign level design projects where they're saying, hey, we're doing a mission to the moon, we're working on a pressurized rover. Uh, we've got this idea and we want you guys to help us make it happen. You know, starting off with sketching and rendering, very conceptual, take it to a full-scale mock-up phase out of wood, uh, foam core, low fidelity materials. Uh, we use those to kind of sketch out the volume of how big the vehicle might be and how it would feel on the inside. Part of what we'll do when we're designing a habitat is we'll look at how, you know, how the corners, how the edges are treated, what type of paint schemes are going to go inside. There was actually an issue with one of the colors that they had painted on the International Space Station where one of the hatches was like a salmon uh, color and the crew really disliked it. So and we try to avoid salmon now. And then working out the details in a CAD system on the computer and developing a fully functional prototype. And the type of design at NASA that we do is uh, kind of crosses the line between fine art and engineering. So it's a lot more problem solving though, which is what makes it really exciting. So uh, this is the SEV, the Space Exploration Vehicle on the chassis, uh, Gen 1B. For you know, interior design for space vehicles, uh, there's certainly the, the problem of confinement, which is a, you know, a psychological issue for crew members over time. So we have to deal with ways of designing environments and designing products that will reduce the, the, uh, the effects of uh, you know, feelings of confinement in space. Yeah, so this is the interior of the SEV rover, uh, Gen 1B. Uh, and most of the interior design elements uh, was a uh, product of, of our team, as well as the robotics team that we've been working with on this vehicle for some time. So, you know, we've uh, kind of been charged with making the interior of the vehicle more comfortable, and more uh, luxurious, if you can call it that. Seeing as most of us haven't actually been to outer space, it's, it can make things very difficult sometimes because everybody has a different opinion or different assumptions that they're making about what that experience is like. It's a, a very uh, testing and evaluation intensive work environment, so you know we have to do whatever we can to ensure that these products will work in their intended environment. So sometimes that means flying products uh, or mock-ups on a zero-gravity flight um, in the parabolic aircraft. Uh, sometimes it means going out into the desert and testing them in a very harsh, uh, kind of desolate environment uh, that might be similar to what we would encounter in space. There's always that kind of that thing with designers between you know, are you going to be like a stylist or are you going to be a problem solver and you can look at a, a product and say this accomplishes exactly what we need it to accomplish and that's what makes it beautiful and that's what makes it successful. It's a very a pure uh, design problem that we're dealing with which is you know to create products and environments that uh, the crew 
will find useful and will make them successful and productive in their daily routines. Go for main engine start. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. All three engines up and burning. 2, 1, 0, and lift off, the final lift off of Atlantis. The shuttle program and the International Space Station were started in the 80s as sort of a, a longer term analog for human spaceflight and establishing a permanent human presence in, in space. To start to learn more about how humans would behave and, and you know, interact in longer term space flight scenarios. I've kind of felt like uh, a lot of people in general um, are maybe not as excited by the International Space Station or by the shuttle program, or at least not as, as much as they were maybe in the 80s when the shuttle was brand new, you know? I just hope that we can really re-engage people in the right way and get people excited about spaceflight because the, this next generation of space vehicles is going to be the most badass that we've ever seen.